Yo guys, what's up? Nappy Head Millie here, your favorite slum lord. Like, share, subscribe if you're new. Um, first and foremost, before I get to the topic at hand, thank you guys. Thank you guys for the support, the love and support. I love it when I see people come to my channel. Even if they don't subscribe, I just love seeing people come to my channel, leaving comments, leaving likes. Um, earlier this year, I really thought about giving up on YouTube as I just started the YouTube this year. But seeing people coming through, helping out, you know, I'm at 57 subscribers. Shout out to everyone that subscribed in the past month. It's, I can see the growth. I can see the growth. It's small growth right now, but it'll get there. But let's get to the topic at hand because I'm going on too long. One tricks. Now, in the background, you're going to see more of our gameplay. You can kind of call me a vibe one trick, but I'm not. I'm more of a jack of all trades. I try to learn at least four to five characters, but one tricky and roll company. Will it be viable once rank come out? This is something that is always taught in these types of games, these hero shooters, because that's essentially what a roll company game is, is a hero shooter. But yeah, let's get started. So do I think it's viable? I'm going to start off just giving straight up answer. Yes and no. I think it will be strong, but I think it will have its, you know, drawbacks. Now, if you don't know what a one trick is, a one trick is a person that tries to hang on to only one character, but they might know other characters. So one trick isn't just I play one character, one character alone. One trick is I play one character, solely one character for about 90% of the time and then I might have a time where I might play another character maybe every once every blue moon so one tricking can be powerful because when you one trick you know what your character can do and role company compositions are based off abilities and passives that's it utilities abilities and passives uh, gunplay is gunplay Yes, you have what guns are great. Like, the DMRs are very solid. I think all four are usable. The Mama, a little bit, not so much because of the options that come with the two characters that do get the Mamba, but it's still a very usable DMR. You know, what is it? The MXR, MRX. Y'all know which one I'm talking about. Trench and Dahlia, two of the best roles in the game right now. Gunplay is gunplay, so I don't try to compare it to gunplay because that's going to come down to the skill of the player. But why do I think it's going to be good? Like I said before, just knowledge of your character. You, you as a one trick, you should have more knowledge of a character than anybody else. So, for instance, I'm playing Vi. If I became a Vi one trick, I know the ins and outs, how far I can throw my poison, what's the best time to throw my poison for each map, which Control point is best for Vibe to take over to get the most out of her passive. Um, understanding how far it takes for a tear gas to go, how far it takes for incinerators to go, how much damage my nightshade can go. I, I understand these things. I should understand these things because part of being a one trick is you should have outstanding knowledge of your character. Um, but that leads into the bad. Now the bad kind of a little bit outweighs the good. I think anybody with a vast knowledge of their character is a great thing and I think in certain compositions any one trick can work but it's when the composition doesn't need that one trick that's the first and foremost thing meta is starting to get established and while we do have off meta picks that usually work the meta meta people play meta characters for a reason it's statistically shown to work so for instance you have ghosts Ghost statistically worked in Overwatch. It worked so well that if you did any other comp, like Dive, which was the comp before Ghost, you were getting destroyed most of the time. You know what I'm saying? And then you had off-meta picks that people, you know, they'll rage about. Now, some off-meta could work. So right now, if we're being 100% honest, honest right now, the meta consists of have a Dahlia, have a Trench. And we're talking about from the competitive scene. Now, of course, we don't have rank, so we don't have super solidified, but if we're talking about competitive, using CM, CMG tournaments as a catalyst, we're looking at, you need a trench with a DMR, you need a Dahlia with a DMR, you need either a Ronin or a Lancer, you need somebody that can flank well, and then your fourth can be anybody. But most of the time, as of right now, we're seeing a huge influx of Vi. Vi use a 
credibility has went up from she's middle of the pack to she's basically top tier. Vi is getting a lot of usage as of right now. So you have to take that into accountability. Now let's say somebody one tricks Scorch, right? While Scorch can work, she's replacing options for Dahlia because the comp mainly revolves around Dahlia from what I see. You're replacing somebody that Dahlia can switch on to if she, for some amazing reason, doesn't want to switch on to the trench. You know, I don't think Fireproof is that good of a passive. And, you know, as a one trick, you might just not care. Now, if the meta shows that Scorch is not good in this comp and you're getting destroyed because it says Scorch, yet again, it comes down to gameplay, but it also comes down to that extra utility. It also comes down to passives and what works for the team. And Scorch, let's be honest, she's kind of a, she's like a chalk in a sense. They're selfish, but their selfishness is what they bring to the team. You know another big thing and this is one that we've experienced in road company already is when a one trick doesn't get his character they quit they quit or they're raging or they're toxic we already right now have a big at least on Twitter side we have a big thing on the community being super toxic and while I don't believe the community is toxic, I believe the community does what shooters always do. Other people are more deeply invested. I'm invested, but I'm not deeply invested because I can't afford to get super deeply invested like I want to. So you have organizers saying this game is toxic. You have players saying this game is toxic. Add on playing with one tricks that like, like add on playing with a one trick that he doesn't get his character because somebody quick pick Ronin and this is a Ronin one trick and he quits the game now you're at a disadvantage and trust me when rank come out you might think you can win a 3v4 which it is winnable but the stakes are not with you so that's another thing and then I think the last thing is not being versatile I, I don't think a lot of one tricks can afford to be versatile you know because you have one set gameplay a lot of people that have different knowledge of different characters that play different play styles have they they have a different way of thinking now let me explain if you play phantom right let's say you play phantom but you also play somebody like let's say talent two different play styles but you can learn from the two different play styles as a phantom you can learn how to take those aggressive fights with the pistol because Talon has a decent pistol where he can actually go off with that pistol if you let him. Uh, you can learn how to do something as simple as that. You can learn how to, as a Talon, better position yourself. And that's a huge thing. I, that's literally 60% of winning a match is just learning positioning. And if, as a Talon, if you're a great Phantom and your positioning is perfect with Phantom, Trust me, it's going to trickle down to anybody else you play. It might be a little bit longer range, but you will trickle down and say, hmm, you know, I know how to abuse the long range because I play Phantom. It might not be exactly the same, but you know how to abuse the long range, so it actually helps trickle down to another character. Now, one tricks don't get that leisure. They can, but it's very harder for them to do that because their character might make them play a certain way i eat chalk mains no disrespect to chalk mains like i said um i actually got <laughs> i actually had a nice little experience with chalk i might throw a little quick clip right here sorry for the stutter a little clip right here but a lot of chalk mains they play one way they go into a fight get obliterated and then they just pop off because they think they're going to get a free res off instead of playing Chalk the way he's supposed to do. Chalk, in my opinion, is a distraction. He can go in, he can duel two people by himself because of his ultimate. I'm going to call it ultimate for now. His ability, his ultimate. And it's just so happened. The only time you use that ability, if you lose a 1v1, your team picks somebody off. And you got, you know, you can, if they're distracting the person, you can pop the off. But nine times out of ten, you want to use it to go into a fight in 2v1. And get stuff done at least from what i experienced at least from what i play from a lot of one tricks will keep that same mindset of i gotta go in and die you know 
my ability to save me and it won't. And now, what are you really doing for the team? And I'm not trying to bash any one tricks. I will recommend learning at least three characters. Say three characters minimal. Because two ain't going to really... Two will help you. Two is good. But three makes you very versatile. You can play one super heavy. But still have knowledge of another two. Just in case you get into those matches when rank come out. Where somebody's playing your main. And you need to go to a secondary character. And you're not stuck. Especially with people like Phantom Maze. Because Phantom, trust me, go from playing Phantom to playing anybody else, or playing anybody else to go and playing Phantom, it is night and day. It's totally different from what you have to do. But um, that's the end of this video. I just want to have a quick conversation. I was going to do like a whole notes thing, talking about the Q&A they had earlier, but... I'm going to be honest with y'all, I was stuttering like crazy, and I didn't like the video. I kind of get self-conscious when I talk. You see how I'm doing right now? I get self-conscious when I'm talking in videos like this. So it, it's something new. It's something that I'm still working on. I've been working on it. I damn near been doing YouTube for a whole year now. Damn, that's crazy, but like, share, subscribe. I love you guys. Thank you guys for the support, and I'm out. Peace.